Yeah, I guess I actually need the microphone here if I'm going to speak. Uh, welcome, welcome, one and all. This is your host, ID Jester. Welcome to our scenario overview and setup for Heroes of North Africa, the Lock and Load and Tactical Series system from Lock and Load Publishing. Be sure to check out their website, Lock and Load Publishing, and uh, get yourself a copy. We are going to be looking at, uh, let's get it out here. Ow, come here, you. Righto, so in the uh, module rules and scenarios, we're going to be looking at scenario number one, bunker busting. So this is uh, near Moyali, Moyali, Kenya. June 28th, 1940. The Italian 9th Colonial Brigade attempted to crack the numerous defense of the Fort of Mayola, Kenya, and drive the first King's Africa rifles from the town and surrounding area. The area was prepared with an initial artillery bombardment, but many of the shells did not even explode. A ground attack would have to have better success against the first car King's African rifles. So we got the uh, British Commonwealth, the elements of the first King's Africa rifles. And for the Italians, we have the Elemente della Ninth Brigada Canale, Canale, something like that. So, uh, and you can see over here, it is a, a one map scenario with some special rules we'll cover as we go over the actual scenario. All right, so uh, I've got it all kind of uh, set up ahead of time here. If you're looking for actual gameplay of this, probably not going to actually play this right this, uh, in this episode. Come back for part two. This is just going to be kind of the setup of the scenario so that you guys when we do play it will have a good idea of what's going on so uh here is our map all set up and ready to go i me move this back and out of the way so uh north is that way south is down here west is towards the camera over here and east is over here so that's kind of north the brits are uh, over here set up in the bunkers and uh, just ordered Elder Sign, my first game of its type, and the expansion there. Uh, oh, cool. Elder Sign is an awesome game. I was actually might even play that here in the next day or two. I'm looking forward to getting that out. So, Jason, uh, it's a good good game, definitely. And if you can get the, any of the expanses, grab them if you can, because they're going to be hard to find. So, um so let's talk a little bit about the setup. So the Brits are already over here on the eastern side of the map. The Italians are, ooh, the Italians, oof. Let's see if I can do this without destroying it. The Italians are going to be here. Hello, over here. Hello, over here. There you go. So the Italians are going to be coming on board from the west and attacking over here. So let's look at the defenses of the British units first. So the British have uh, eight wire hexes lined up in front of their fortifications here. They have three bunkers. We have a bunker in the back here. We have a kind of in the middle and then one in the back over here. The scenario, scenario, the scenario objective for the Italians is to take two of the three bunkers. They win if they get two of three. If they don't, then the British win. There is, uh, I believe, seven turns in this scenario as well. Uh, besides the three bunkers, which are here, here, and here, Bunkers, uh, before we move on, bunkers have a facing based upon the little red-sided 
marker there. And they must have a face side, either in one of the two hexes uh, to the west from their setup location. And units inside bunkers can only fire outside the three hexes that um, are front in front of the bunker. So for this bunker, who's set up facing this hex, he could fire from down this way, from there, or over to here. So the bunker couldn't actually shoot these units right here because it's not within his arc of fire. And the bunkers can't obviously rotate or anything like that in the middle of the scenario. And then this bunker here is facing this direction. This bunker is also facing this direction. And then this bunker is facing this direction to kind of give a cross fire. I grabbed the expansion kind of figuring it'd be hard to get. And I'm glad it's a good game. I trust your judgment. Yeah, thanks. Um, definitely a super good game. Solo friendly for sure. If you're playing by yourself, um, expansions just add so much new units and new enemies and everything and uh, definitely can uh, expand the game for you. So looking forward to hearing about it, Jason, for sure. All right. Besides the three bunkers that they have in the back, the British also have four Sangars. Ooh. Which are the oh come here you? Which are these units uh, defensive? They're just like rocky formations that uh, they have to set up. I should mention that these are not uh, the sand guards and the bunkers have a set location. It's not up to the British player to just you know. A lot of times it'll say, you know, any anywhere east of hex row H, you can set these up. These. These are set up in specific spots. So they have four Sangars and they have three bunkers already set up. And then you can place your units however you want. So for the bunker in the back, the two back bunkers, I just put their regular infantry units. Which is a 174 and then a 5 morale. So these units actually have a pretty decent range of seven hexes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can actually shoot all the way out past where the wire hexes are. And even though they're located way back here, pretty decent range on these guys. So in the back, we have those. In the middle bunker here, we have a medic unit. Ah, come here, you. So a medic unit here. There we go, a medic. And then we also have a Vickers machine gun that's located inside that bunker as well. So fire strength of two up to range of 12. So, uh, and uh, even though uh, you normally put the units underneath the bunker to show that they're inside the bunker because I've got the four X maps. We have lots of space. I'm just going to put the units behind the bunker. So I don't need to keep moving the bunker uh, out <laughs> of the way all the time to look at the units underneath. Same thing with the sand guards. The units are actually in the sand guards, uh, even though they're not technically underneath the Sangar counter. So you would normally set them up like this, but because I got the 4X maps and they're bigger, I don't need to do that. Um, so, so we got the uh, Vickers heavy machine gun team and the medic. We got a squad back there and a squad back here. Now let's talk about the frontline fighters. Obviously they have wire to kind of protect their front side. And then they have four Sangars. We'll call this the right side. This is the left side. But they're very similar in the outside Sangars. So this one and this one, We again, we just have another one of their 174 units. 
to another one of their squads except for now I've got to trim the bottom edge of this so I don't have any little loose doohickeys hanging off of them all right and then in the kind of the inner part of each of these sand gars, we have a leader and this one we have uh, down in the south end we have Lieutenant Guttermuth and in that sand gar then we have another squad which is a 174 and we have a 51 millimeter mortar unit it's got a fire factor of two range two to nine hexes to the north we have kind of the same thing squad and then we have another squad with the mortar and we also have another leader up here this is going to be come on sergeant terhuni sergeant terhuni that sergeant terhuni has a special ability called stiff upper lip so he has a special ability called Stiff Upper Whip, which means any units in his hex take a minus one to all combat, uh, what's it called? Combat, where's my cheat here that gives all the Stiff Upper Whip? Uh, the leader in all units stacked with the leader or hero is defiant in the face of adversity subtract one from all damage checks they must take so they subtract one from all damage checks that they have to take so that will be this unit so kind of very symmetrical uh in the setup here of course this is the um the base setup for the british and as i mentioned the italians now will be coming in from over here on the west side so let's look at what they have and talk about their units shall we all right so the italians have a bunch of 10 of these squads they're one four four and a morale of four so kind of light on morale up here and 144s, so they don't have very good range either. So they're going to have to get a lot closer than the British, but they do have 10 squads. They also have a Brixia 35 heavy uh, machine gun that comes in dismantled. So someone's carrying this and then they have oh i'm sorry this is their i believe is this or oh this is i'm sorry this is their mortar unit this is their mortar unit sorry hey robert viper dave how's it going guys so they have one mortar unit that comes in uh dismantled and then they have two they have two hello there we go so they have two of these Breda 37 heavy machine guns so two of these uh, heavy machine guns and they also come in dismantled so that we have one of the squads carrying them so we have two of those and then we have a satchel charge so we have a satchel charge so one of the units will be carrying that as well and then we have some leaders so we have uh 
Let's see, which is the leader that has mm, Captain Vasta. So Captain Vasta, here he is, Captain Vasta. Captain Va Vesta. Come on, focus. Yeah, I know, right? So Captain Vesta actually has this ability called Avanti so Saviota. Avanti Soviota. So he has that special ability. It is a one-time use special ability, actually, which is kind of interesting. And what it does is all Italian units, with or without a leader, a hero, a medic, or a kaplan in their hex can attempt to rally. So it's basically blows on a big horn or whatever, and it's like, and everyone gets to like free rally. Eligible, eligible units that have already attempted and failed to rally during the current rally phase can attempt to rally again. Leadership and terrain modifiers do apply. So it's basically a single use time where he can blow the horn and everybody, whether they have a leader in their hex or not, any Italian can make a free rally attempt. And even if they've done already tried for a rally attempt. So great way to kind of rally everybody that might be broken. Hey, OG, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. So that's his, his special ability. Uh, so that is uh, Captain Vasta. Then we have a chaplain that is there that comes in for the Italians. The only thing he can do is rally units. He can't fight. He can't direct units. He can't do anything other than rally units. In fact, you can see it says on his thing, rally units. So he's there to kind of just rally units, say a prayer to them or whatever, and... Uh, yeah, kind of take care of him. Hopefully help him out. Uh, we also have Serge Stiga, leader, with the big fancy helmet and his flowing mane off of his helmet. Serge Stiga. And then we have this unit here. We have Spano the hero. Spano the hero has arrived. Yes. So they start with the hero in play. This hero has a firepower of two. And it can um, it can assault move. And it also has, here we go. It can assault move. And it also um, has, what is it called? Um. Uh, extended range. Extended range. So he can shoot out to four hexes with one firepower. So starts the hero. Then, right? Then, according to the setup of the scenario, they have ten Trovatos. They have ten Trovatos. See that? So they have 10 Tavatos. Tavata. Tavatos. And I'm like, what the hell is, what is a Tavato? I even looked it up on Google, right? I'm like, what the hell is Tavato? I looked at all of the counters and I'm like, are they like, are those, are those are like, are these um, like some kind of a truck or some kind of carrier? I mean, there's like 10 squads, so there's got to be like 10 carriers. But I looked at the counters and the counters, there wasn't like 10 carriers. And I'm like, what the hell are they? I looked up Google. What is a Travano? And Travano in Italian means like, uh, oops, let's see. What is Italian for Travano? Right? So I went and I said, what is, hmm, what's the name of it? 
TRO. Right? TRO. VA. TO. Tovato. Right? What is the meaning of Tovato? And I'm like, definitions. Maybe it'll tell me what kind of unit it is. Right? And it's like, uh, no, that wasn't the one I looked at. Where was the one I looked at? Mm. Oh, see, it's already, see how it's already highlighted? Because this is the one I clicked on. See how it's like in purple? And I'm like, what does Devato mean in Italian? And I'm like, it means like found something. I'm like, found something? That's what? So, What? How how can that possibly be? What the hell is a Tavato? Oh my god. And I'm like, um So I'm looking at all the counters and I'm like, how in the hell? There's I mean, you know, there's only so many they have to have ten of them. So I'm looking for all the counters that there's like ten of them. There's like a motorcycle unit they have ten of. And there's like um uh, I think those are the only other kind of like transports. I'm like, do they get like motorcycles? Are all the Italians in motorcycles or whatever? Long story short, right? Ten Tavatos. They have ten Tavatos. They don't have ten of them. They have one ten Tavato. He's a dude. I was this this close to emailing OG and saying, what the hell is a Tavato? I can't figure out what these Italians are supposed to have. I don't know what the hell they have. I was going to email OG and say, what the hell is this scenario about? They don't have 10 Tavatos. They got a single Tavato. And his first name is Ten. <sighs> I thought you guys might get a kick out of that. <laughs> uh, it took me like 35 minutes of setup time to figure out what Ten Tavatos were. I'll probably never hear the end of my Ten Tavatos ever again. Uh, for the setup, some interesting things we need to talk about. So, the Italians come in over here from the west. They have these gum trees. Gum trees are set up in this hex, this hex, this hex, and this hex. So, they actually have a little bit of defensive abilities. Uh to kind of put some units in there, probably their heavy machine guns and their mortars, and covering the units that are moving up into the line of fire of all the British units. Oh, by the way, the Italians also receive three off-board artillery missions, a three firepower each. So three off-board artillery missions, three firepower each. So, uh, so they got these gum trees that they can kind of get some of their units into. And then as the rest of their units are going up to assault, hopefully these units can, you know, break the enemy or cause casualties with, uh, again, they got, uh, two heavy machine guns. They got a mortar unit and I think that is actually, yeah, that's kind of it. They do have a satchel charge, but yeah. So a mortar unit and two heavy machine guns, plus all their squads. Now, special rules for this scenario. Yeah, let's talk about the special rules. So, before the actual start of the game, the Italians had fired a artillery barrage against the forts before the start of the game. Each British... Multi-man counter and single-man counter must make a morale check. And the TM does apply. 
So every unit over here for the British has to make a morale check. If they fail their morale check, then they start the scenario shaken. Uh, and then we actually go into the actual phases of the game. And in the first rally phase, the units that are broken or shaken can actually try to rally at that point. Uh, so, yeah, they have to make a, uh, a check, and if they fail, they begin the game shaken. Rally attempts can be made during turn one's rally phase if they're eligible. All right, in this special scenario, sand does not exist in this scenario. Normally, this would be all sand, and there's some special sand rules in Heroes of North Africa. But in this scenario, the sand has been packed down so hard it's more like dirt than sand so you don't you don't play with the sand rules in this scenario but sand is going to be interesting when you play some of the other scenarios for sure um so we're playing all hexes is clear including these hexes here these little road nub things are not in play these are also clear as well so everything in the map is clear 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 now bunkers Bunkers take on whatever, and sand guards for that matter, sand guards and bunkers take on the characteristics of whatever hex they're in for spotting purposes. These are all clear hexes, as we just said, so anyone in the bunker and in the sand guard can be spotted by anybody else. And the gum trees are, kind of work the same way. The gum trees give a hindrance when you're shooting through them. But they're still open terrain. So basically, in this scenario, interestingly enough, spotting rules are going to be very limited because pretty much everybody can see everybody. You don't have to worry about having to spot your enemies. These guys over here can spot the British. The British can spot them, which kind of makes sense. It's desert warfare. You can see guys coming from, you know, half a mile away or whatever and these each one of these hexes i think is 30 uh 50 meters right 50 meters so you know you can see everyone can see they can see the sand guards they can see the bunkers everyone can see everyone which is interesting because in normal lock and load right if there's terrain and forest and and uh stuff like that and, and trees and woods and buildings and stuff you can't spot units until they... Uh, there are certain conditions that you have to do to spot units. They have to fire or they have to move for you to be able to see them, etc., etc. But in this scenario, units can move around and do whatever because it doesn't matter because everyone can spot everyone. So, And then, of course, with the preemptive artillery barrage, uh, the British are kind of... You know, they have to make morale checks in everyone. They only have so many leaders. So it depends on how well the units, like if this unit's shaken and this unit's shaken, that's going to be twice as bad for the British as having like this unit shaken because these units won't be able to rally because they don't have a leader with them, but this unit does have one. So it all, it, it can make the scenario really uh, easier or harder depending on how the British do with their rallies and which units end up failing um, with their rallies. <clears throat> what else? Uh, so as I mentioned in the beginning, the bunkers, the sand guards, the wires, the gum trees, all the terrain and everything on the actual map, <clears throat> those are set up by the scenario special rules. Uh, oops. Uh, the British player doesn't get to decide how to set up. It's basically already preemptively set up for you. The sand guards start there. The bunkers start in these positions. And the wire starts there, which is kind of how you would probably set it up anyways. I think they're just taking the setup out of it for you so you don't have to spend 45 minutes trying to figure out how to set up your units, which I like. I actually like that. I think more scenarios should do that. Hopefully the OG's listening and saying to himself, I should take Jester's advice and make sure that my scenarios are already set up so that players don't spend half of their time just trying to set up the damn scenario. What else? Oh, yes. So uh, in 
Heroes of North Africa, the Italians had special no low, uh, low ammo rules because they weren't re- prepared for war. They didn't logistically get their supplies to their units in an orderly fashion. A lot of units didn't take the supplies that they went or, or needed when they went on these uh, missions. So normally, you every at the beginning of every turn, you roll to find out if the Italians are going to be short supply or not. In this scenario, there is no, there is no sup, uh, low supply rules for the Italians. So the Italians can shoot and fire and move and everything without having to worry about running out of ammo. But that's not going to be true for a lot of the scenarios in this uh, Heroes of North Africa because they will be having to roll every time they make attacks for low uh, ammo. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. So again, to win the scenario, the Italians need to capture... Two of these three bunkers, one here, one here, one here. That's the only victory. Uh, it doesn't matter about casualties. That's the only victory objective in this case. So if the Italians get two or more bunkers, they win the scenario. If they don't, then the British win the scenario. So it doesn't matter how many units you end up losing. Uh, all it matters is whether or not you get your objectives within the allowed time, which we talked about in the beginning was, mm, I believe it was seven turns, if I'm not mistaken. Where does it say that? Where does it say that? Hmm. hmm. Uh, um, I'm sure it said it somewhere. I can't find it. Where was it? Why, why can't I find it? I don't know. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, yeah. Scenario length. Right there, the big bold letters that say scenario length. Seven turns, yeah. Seven turns. The Italians have initiative on first turn. Obviously, it makes sense. They have to actually move up before the British can do anything. And most importantly, the Italian squads all have a morale of four on turn one. So, uh, which is interesting because all of the units are all the squads have a morale of four anyways. So, uh, actually, let me look at the special uh, special rules for Heroes of North Africa because I'm wondering, because actually, technically, they have a 144 star. So, I believe, and there's a lot of units that have special rules in Heroes of North Africa. Uh, but let's look at these Italian, Italian. Oh, so these are Royal Army second line units. Okay, so these are actually, so the 1444 are what they call Royal Army, uh, but they are second line units. See, the first line units are 154 with the five around. These are second line units. So Royal Army units, both first and second line, were unpredictable when determining how well they would fight. To address this, Royal Army units have an asterisk before their morale value. When the Italian player rolls an unmodified six on his initiative roll, each Royal Army unit with an asterisk adds one to its morale for the game for for the current game turn. Keep track of this with the unpredictability. So the Italians will have automatically in the first turn they will have a morale of four. But when we do initiative. Right, if they roll four, two, whatever, they keep their morale. But if they roll a six, then they actually go up one in their morale value, so they'll all be a plus one instead of being a four morale. They would actually have a five morale. So these are their 
Royal Army units. Both the first and the second line. So, just depends on the initiative, I guess. So, the first turn, they will automatically have the four. And then, like I said, later on, they might get the five uh, morale as well. So, what else do we need to cover? Anything else? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it for this scenario. I pretty much, I think that's pretty much it for this scenario. Uh, I do have... For the Italians, special red and gold dice. And for the British, they have their special blue and gold dice. Oh, yeah. Look at that, huh? That's that's for the Brits, right? And then these are for the Italianos. Um, let me make sure there was anything else in the special scenario rules. Bum, 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 bum. Bunster, Bunky, and do, 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 do. <sighs> uh, the, uh, one thing I didn't mention, but it should be self-explanatory. The British must set up in their sun yards or bunkers. So you can't just have all the British line up. They have to set up in either the sand guards or the bunkers. And I think that's all the special rules. Pretty simple. You know, there's not too many special. Um, you know, this is kind of like a, I, I don't know. I wouldn't call it an introductory scenario, but it's kind of an introductory scenario. There's not a lot of like um, things that you specifically need to worry about. Because if you look at, uh, you know, the, the actual rule book, I mean, there is quite a few examples of um, special terrains. Uh, you have the sand rules. You have being bogged down. You have dust clouds. We haven't even talked about dust clouds, but you have dust clouds. You have... Uh, Special rules for all the different Italian units. Uh, we talked about this, but the low ammo rule for the Italians. There's like a whole sheet on rules for that. The Italian squad reductions. The French reductions. The American forces. There is special rules for the Bren carriers. For the open top vehicles. For the American forces, for the air supports, uh, the sand guards, the craters, tank emplacements, mounted units. So, I mean, there is quite a lot of extra rules that we're not using in this in this scenario, which is, well, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good introductory scenario. Get our feet wet for the old desert warfare. And, uh, you know, doesn't throw too much at you. Uh, too quickly so that you can play a scenario get used to some of the the mechanics of the game focus on the fun part of the game and not get bogged down in the rules so that should be pretty good um yeah like i said we're probably not going to be playing any to, in this episode we're going to just go through the overview and the setup uh and yeah Kind of show everyone how this scenario, what the layout and everything is, so that you guys, when we do play it, have a better idea of uh, what's going on. So, uh, if you, anyone has any thoughts, questions, suggestions, comments, or whatever, let me know down in the comments section down below. Hopefully, we're going to get this uh, going here either sometime probably over the... Friday, Saturday, Sunday coming up. Somewhere along there. We're going to get a nice couple sessions in. Get a few turns. I'm going to get this one uh, on the table and get it uh, really going. And hopefully get a couple of the Heroes of North Africa scenario. Unfortunately for myself. Well, fortunately. Right? We just got a big order from Lock and Load for the Christmas sale. And then I did an unboxing of all this stuff. We got the Heroes from... Heroes from the Pacific, Heroes of North Africa, we get to uh, Heroes of uh, France, 
Uh, and then uh, somebody mentioned, oh, the Christmas sale is still going on. So I went back on and ordered some more stuff. So <laughs> I got another package coming. So good for me. It's just like, wow, I just don't have enough time to do everything I want to do. But this way I'll have it and be prepared in case I do want to do it. So anyways, should be a good battle. Should be pretty uh, fun for everyone to check out and watch. And hopefully uh, if you're unfamiliar with um, Lock and Low Tactical, which you should be, uh, you know, it's pretty easy, pretty good system does some things differently the only issue i'm going to have is obviously playing panzer grenadier very similar system they do things differently so i'm probably going to mix up rules like you know when leaders activate in panzer grenadier they activate their hex and all their surrounding hexes well they do the same thing in this but in panzer grenadier all the units can go their own way and do their own thing in Lock and Low Tactical, when you activate a hex and units from the same hex to either fire or move, they need to stick together and move together or fire together. And if they fire together, they have to fire at the same hex. They can't just willy-nilly shoot at anybody. So I'm hoping to <laughs> not combine different game rules with this uh, for everyone. But it should be a lot of fun. I look forward to bringing it to you so it's good they have the nice tree line here get some units in there and basically the, the rest of the units are going to be pushing forward obviously the british are going to be shooting them trying to stop them as best they can and uh yeah it should be interesting to see how how it goes can the uh can the weight of the offense there's everyone can see everyone there's not much cover sangar is a plus one bunkers are plus two the trees are plus one gum trees. I don't know why they call them gum trees, but they are plus one. So not a lot of covers. So probably a lot of units are going to be casualties. So we'll see. It should be fun. Thanks for joining us for the overview and look at scenario number one. Hopefully you'll join us for the actual gameplay and we'll see you guys then. So Jason and Robert, Viper Dave, the OG, Mr. Lock and Low Tactical himself, and Jason and Peter, you guys have a good night and we will see everyone next time. So thanks for watching.